Okay, part two of welcome back. Uh, this is the uh, the meaty and sometimes uninteresting stuff, but hopefully uh, parents and students, you'll all find it informative. Uh, again, my name is Rob McGahey, and I teach um, all of the CAD courses within the Department of Career and Technology Education, also known as CTE. Um, if you look right here, uh, these are the courses I teach. Tech CAD, um, I think we actually submitted a uh, request to change the name of that class uh, for next year, hopefully, which would then be called uh, Intro to CAD Drafting and Design. So <clears throat> that's the um, that class, and the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, 3D solid modeling doesn't necessarily mean that we're modeling anything with, uh, with clay, although we do build uh, prototypes in that class, and we will be doing that um, in remote learning as well. Uh, TechCAD is the prerequisite for any other class on this page. So if you want to take engineering, for instance, you will have had to take TechCAD, 3D solid modeling, and then you can take engineering. Same with architecture too. If you wanted to get to that class, you would have to take TechCAD, then Arc 1, and then you could get to Arc 2. CAD Studio is our capstone course for the uh, program. And um, that typically you can get to that point by junior year. Um, and definitely by senior year, okay? Information here, you're all going to receive an email from me. Um, so uh, hopefully you save this. I will send uh, this course outline as an attachment. Um, <clears throat> if you had an issue opening an attachment, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just copy-paste it into that email as well. So you um, will have access to my email, um, which you can also get off the Plainfield Central homepage. Zoom logins, I will post those. Um, along with other welcome back material, um, both on Google Classroom for students as well as on the email. Parents, I will send um, all of your emails are going to come across through Home Access Center. Um, I attach students on that as well, but students, you should be using strictly Google Classroom to um, get with me, whether that be for an email or an announcement or anything else, okay? Google Class Codes, everybody is... Um, enrolled in one of the classroom classes right now so you should all uh, be able to go into your Google Classroom as of right now there's no content in it uh, but as of later today and Sunday night there will be okay I also have a teacher website right here which uh, takes you to my uh, teacher page or class website okay um, I sent you guys a welcome back video but again just to uh, go back and uh, try to reemphasize, you know, we've had a number of things um, recently, which, you know, kind of makes us feel like we're under a rain cloud. And, um, you know, I think uh, the big thing is staying positive, uh, and I will be very positive. So I will uh, do my best to create meaningful projects and um, um, is, is a great learning experience for the kids. A couple of things, supplies, nothing crazy for this class. Um, everybody has been issued a computer. We will be using two programs, uh, chiefly SketchUp and um, Autodesk Fusion 360 for this class. I'm not even going to get into programs uh, for the first week and a half to two weeks, okay? So uh, the things you need, and you need them in class, um, are uh, a ruler, okay? I provide rulers in class. The ruler has to be an imperial ruler, um, also, you know, otherwise known as uh, inches. Okay, this ruler has a metric side, and that's fine. Um, now those inches, I'm going to hold it up really close, should be subdivided into sixteenths. In other words, a sixteenth scale ruler. Okay. Um, paper and pencil. I'm not. Students don't need to, to keep a, a, a notebook per se, but um, we'll do be, be doing a number of concept drawings and sketching exercises um, to prime us, and that's a skill that we we really work on in school and I think remote learning is actually presenting us with uh, an even better opportunity to do that okay I noted right here graph paper definitely not necessary if you have it around that's great if you're going to the store and you can pick up a pack that's that's helpful too especially if um, for students if you have a, um, a difficult or a hard time drawing straight lines um, or anything else and then pencils and pens nothing in particular um, especially for architecture though. Um, architecture courses, a couple of different colors can be really helpful. So do your best with those things. Definitely a ruler though. You can't get through it without a ruler. Um, course content. Uh, you guys can read that on your own, um, but we're in the practice of 
uh, and we'll do an assignment um, right off the bat pretty pretty close and then in the first few days about the language of drafting and design and, and if I can convey one thing just like Spanish or German uh, or mathematics um, or music they're all languages um, they all have their own um, symbols and those symbols all carry their own meaning and that's the same thing with any type of drafting and design course okay so really quick please read this on your own I'm trying to just highlight it I don't want to read it for you we will have recorded zoom videos every day um, with that please note those recordings will be deleted after three days I will use links um, to Google or I'm sorry to videos that you can uh, grab off of YouTube those links will be there forever those are instructional things demos um, but the the live video recordings of our zoom courses um, or class meeting times those will be deleted after three days so that would be one reason it's really important to stay attending class okay because if you come in on a Thursday and you miss Monday and Tuesday uh, that's going to be pretty tough all right um, building and revisiting core skills in the basics uh, we're going to start students have a horribly difficult time with measurement no matter if they're freshmen sophomores juniors or seniors we're going to revisit that and try to get everybody to be proficient at it and um, as well as concept sketching okay and then projects and mini assignments I'll come to that later but projects would be in this course like uh, tests um, but they're not tests per se okay and then mini assignments would just be daily practice items or things that might take a couple of days okay um, I do want to let you know uh, this is uh, for students and especially for parents some of my groupings uh, for instance I might have a course that is uh, second period and it could be 3d and architecture too and the reason for that is um, those might be smaller number classes we might have nine students in 3d and uh, 12 students in architecture too um, so that's enough students to make up one classroom when we're in the building and support one classroom with the number of computers and devices and everything we have um, and both of those are more up you know middle to upper level classes where the students are definitely project based they're all project based but you know they kind of hit the ground running day one um, and that's actually a good thing I think because students who have taken one or the other of those classes actually will have some insights and, and they can show me things and they can show each other things that that makes it really helpful so um, again everything else here is kind of operational and so this is just going to describe the the way the course works on a day-to-day -day basis a little bit about grading and at the very end of this I included the uh, the, the bell schedule which is uh, a zoom attendance schedule or a class period schedule that's also available on the website but I hope that this would uh, make it easy to find as well as um, the, uh, the the requirements or expectations for zoom meetings which is published um, w which was published by the district and through the school okay first thing is attendance I'm gonna take attendance every day just like every teacher in every class uh, should be or will be doing um, this part right here to note I'm, I'm big about punctuality I think it's a, a respect thing right off the bat um, if I have a meeting with you I'm definitely gonna be on time if not early usually early um, same as it goes for with me um, it says a lot about you and the other thing you know we can't duplicate every single thing that we can in the building online but this is one thing we absolutely can and we are preparing at some point whether it be six weeks eight weeks ten weeks who knows to re-enter the building um, the standard for punctuality and getting places on time is identical so um, get on your zoom on time log in uh, the the life happens part of this is right here um, you know five minutes I'm gonna start I'll do the attendance I'll take it five minutes after class starts and the reason for that is I understand you know those those little scrolling wheels that that drive us all crazy you might have logged off of one zoom you're trying to get on another one you could have a computer glitch your battery could have died in the last class and you're trying to get a charger the dog you're at home could be barking you're trying to get the dog outside so definitely get there on time five minutes is a grace period okay um, there is no uh, note in home access center or teacher access center for tardy um, there's only present or absent um, however in my paper grade book 
if a student, let's say, exceeds that five minute time, that, that grace period, um, they come into the Zoom 10 minutes, 15 minutes into the Zoom. I'm just gonna make a note um, and again uh, to the students if something happens please let me know please send me an email or or hang out with me as soon as the zoom meeting ends to, to describe you know what happened and, and and I understand life happens but again we're in a formal class so um, that note is not anything that uh, affects the student um, but it's something I think should be noted because if it becomes uh, habitual or an issue then then I do parents want to let you know and I want to let um, you know the the support uh, staff at, at school, the counselors and deans know just to make sure we don't have a problem. Okay. Pra uh, assignments, assessments in, in my course, um, with the exception of like one that we'll do on measuring, um, are all projects. Okay. So those projects are going to be things that take anywhere from a week to two weeks in, in, in to do. Um, and practice assignments are those more day to day type of things. Okay. It could be just answering a Google form about a video that I sent the night before to say watch the video and answer two questions about it okay um, as of right now the district has said we are grading practice assignments uh, those are 40 percent of the course weight 60 percent are on assessment or projects okay um, they have noted in the return 20 plan that that is subject to change maybe subject to change but that's what i'm going off of in home access center right now as I post grades okay I won't be posting grades on Google classroom even though I'm saying this is our, our primary vein of communication um, because it's it's really double reporting okay so students still stay um, abreast to your uh, home access center um, as far as your grades if you're if you're not seeing grades or if you think you had something that was graded incorrectly but um, on my end uh, it takes twice the time to do the, the Google Classroom to enter the grades as it does on Home Access Center and there's just really not any reason to, to post the same thing twice okay completion and accuracy this is one thing that students tend to like in my class um, every grade every assignment whether it be practice or um, or a project or an assessment is graded at 50% completion and 50% accuracy. So I gave you an example of this right here, number bullet point number two, um, which means you could have completely uh, missed everything about an assignment. You missed the whole thing. You were you were beyond confused. Um, you weren't able to understand something, um, and um, but you did turn it in and you turned it in on time. You're going to get a 50. Okay, so you can't get lower than a 50 if you turn something in on time. But the other 50% of that comes from the accuracy component. How correct is it? Okay, how good of a of quality of work did you submit? And that's the other 50%. So think about it in this case. You turned something in. Um, you did miss a couple of things, but you still got an 80, right? You got an 80 on the accuracy portion, which would be a B. So in that 80, I multiply it times 0.5, right, which is the weight for the, uh, that portion of the assignment, uh, 0.5 for completion, 0.5 for accuracy. So when I take that 80 times 0.5, the weight, you get 40 points, plus the 50 points that you had for completion, so now you get a 90, okay? So what I tell people, students every semester is, you definitely should have a 75, because even if you had a 50, a low grade on the assignment, but you did turn it in on time, that would equal like a 75, okay? or approximately later and complete okay when I we go past the deadline I understand again life happens and, and, and students that's your thing to let me know um, so if something happens then please let me know ahead of time because I can't you know it's, it makes it really difficult to change things afterwards especially in this remote environment uh, but if you turn something in late okay I enter uh, an NHI not handed in in home access center so when you see a not handed in, that equals a zero, okay? Which is the same as an incomplete or if I type in zero or an HI. That's the way that students have real difficulty in my class and the grades when they become low. Um, they are really low because of that. So definitely don't get those. When you do get them, um, I say, uh, if you turn it in, I say, well, okay, you still have an opportunity to do it. You can still turn it in, 
um, up to the end of that unit. So um, if that unit is a two week unit, yeah, you can turn it in at any point and I will give you a 49. Okay, that means I'm not gonna grade the work on the accuracy portion. I'm gonna give you the completion portion minus one point, okay? I've had people say, well, that's still a failing grade. Sure, um, but think about if I presented it in terms of money, you know, okay, you got zero dollars or forty-nine dollars. Forty-nine dollars is a lot more than zero. It's not a hundred, but it's definitely more than zero. You're halfway there, so that will help to elevate your grade, okay? Moving down, material access. The only thing I'll be using is Zoom. Um, last semester, people were using Google Meets, possibly, and, and uh, I don't know what other uh, virtual meeting platforms. Zoom will be our only platform. You'll have your um, URL for access uh, sent to you via email. Um, Google Classroom. This uh, Most students are pretty proficient at this. Uh, students, you guys have been using this for a while. Um, with the Google Classroom. Um, it's not just a matter of clicking submit on an assignment. It's double checking that once that assignment is submitted that it can actually be opened. And I've seen really, really odd things um, from time to time where a student will click something but it wasn't either filled out or it wasn't saved or it was saved in a way that required a, a permission on my end to enter something or I had to enter a, a code for something for you. Um, those are things I, I just, you know, can't can't get around and can't help. So if I can't open the work, um, I will send you a note to say cannot open. Please resubmit. Um, but everything's turned in uh, via Google Classroom. Um, students, please email me via Google Classroom um, as well as um, turn your work in via Google Classroom. I, I'm not gonna uh, this semester be looking at looking for assignments at least that were emailed to my psd202.org email account, okay? So Classroom's the, the only way to go. Instructional videos, I'll post links th to those. Those are, um, I keep those in my YouTube channel for, uh, in case I wanted to use it later on. Who knows if we went to a different, from Zoom to something else, that's the easiest way for me to do it. So I will just send a link to the YouTube video for you. And those will uh, be something that you, you could even create a folder for those on your computer. Uh, video links for my CAD class, okay? Uh, class notification, when am I going to send you uh, what comes up next? Um, typically, I'll try to do this by Friday, um, no later than, than Sunday night uh, or Monday morning, and that would be in the, in, the, in the worst case scenario, okay? So I'll do everything I can Friday, um, even if what we are going to do next week isn't, you know, assignment by assignment. Um, perhaps just a, a simple outline to say next week what we're going to do is move from measurement to scaling and uh, beginning concept sketching. Um, please look forward to the, the video that I send on Sunday night or Monday morning to preview and that way you can see ahead of time what we're going to do. Okay, I will be showing the same videos that I send the night before. Uh, my hope is that you look at them the night before but um, that'll be something that we're doing on our Zoom. One-on-one -on -one help, this goes to students. Please remind your parents and parents, um, you'll have a link sent to you with a Google form. That Google form is just gonna say something to the effect of, um, I authorize uh, my child to uh, be able to log on to Zoom uh, on a one-to-one -one format with the teacher uh, in, in order to get supplementary instruction or tutoring or catch up as needed, okay? so. Please look for those and please um, hit the submit button when you do get those so that I can uh, document that, okay? Professionalism, um, this is something that, come, that you know, I'm big on. Um, get, place, get, you know, get to Zoom, get, our, get to our meetings on time. Uh, be punctual, be punctual, be proactive. When I say proactive, that's on a day-to-day. -day. Um, if you have something coming up, let me know. Uh, my best students are the ones, they know that they're going to be out uh, for, uh, on a Wednesday and they let me know ahead of time, which is great. Um, let me know ahead of time when you have the issue, or at least while you're having it, right? It's a lot, a lot easier to, to deal with it then than it is two weeks later. Um, and the big thing for students right now is not to get behind. Um, again, like I said, those, those videos are deleted every third day. So, you know, when you miss Monday and you don't realize what you missed until Thursday, 
it's really, really hard to go back. And those are cases where, you know, we're all really limited on, you know, I, it, it, I can't really necessarily easily catch a student up on, on two to three days of work in one help session, okay? Below, topics covered, just please read through that on your own. The one thing that I do want to just make you aware of, if you look at this, we're going to start with a, um, a uh, careers uh, um, interview, and um, everyone will do that. Measurement basic scale, every single class is going to do that. Concept sketching, every single class is going to do that. And the reason for that, and research, okay? We're going to do a section on design research. Um, every class is going to do that because that's something that every semester and every year students need refreshing on and this is one reason I'm really really excited about remote learning because I think this is going to give us um, more wiggle room more time and more support um, in those areas okay uh, we like I said we're going to be using two programs one of them is called SketchUp and that's on the computer so that will be our digital uh, on uh, drafting program that's online and then um, Autodesk Fusion 360 is our second one, which will be available on the computer and online. There is, um, right now, there has been, at least over the last uh, two weeks, some, um, some glitches, at least on the setting up account, student account side of it. So uh, I will walk students through it. I'll send out an instructional video as, as to what is required on the student end to log in, create an account, download the program onto the onto the school issued computer um, but don't sweat it right now don't come in you know day one or Sunday night or Monday uh, or Tuesday and say oh my gosh I have to get this uh, software downloaded I'm confused I don't know how to do it we'll get to that okay the first two weeks are gonna be largely um, the basics okay so if you have any questions send me an email I'm just scrolling down right here and um, you could you know print this page not a bad idea and this is our, our what we would call a bell schedule but let's call it a zoom schedule right now so these are the class periods um, and meeting times and hopefully that's uh, useful to you um, and then following that these are the the virtual meeting guidelines um, please read through that um, in its entirety um, and do that on your own a couple of things um, and let me just say this to, to you students and, um, and to parents. Um, with the Zoom instruction, there's nothing that's required um, for students to be, to, uh, to be live on video. Uh, students will, you know, everybody we've seen on Zoom, some people will just click, put up a background or a picture or it'll just be their name or something else. And there's nothing that any of us uh, on the teaching end can say that it's required to have your face up on Zoom. Um, let me just submit this. Uh, I would love to see your faces. Um, and I think that creates a, a level of, of humanism uh, for us. I think it makes uh, this class real and all our classes real. Um, I think it's going to help with with developing a sense of community, especially especially for freshmen, because you uh, you haven't met some of the some of the people both in your class um, in in your grade level. Um, but the biggest thing um, is is the 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 nonverbal kind of body language cues. Uh, when I'm in class uh, as a teacher, I can tell a lot from how things are going. As far as am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Did I not explain something clearly? Do I have a student who got 50% of it and now they're flaking out or trailing off or, or hitting the wall. I can see that based on, on, on facial expression and body language. And that's a big cue to me and a big helper to me to say, okay, I got to hit the brakes or I got to give everyone a break or something else. Um, you know, honestly, it's probably, honestly, it's probably he easier here in this environment to, um, to be able to see faces on zoom uh, than it might be in a room, in a in school environment because everyone would have masks on, um, and th and that makes it really difficult to read um, those 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 facial expressions like oh I'm just totally confused or oh I'm you know struggling to stay awake or something else. So I will encourage this at least at our in our Zoom meetings, um, and uh, and I think it's just a, a a good idea. But again, it's not something that I can that I can make mandatory. Okay. 
Um, and then the last thing as far as this goes, and I think you know everyone's going to wear clothing, of course, and appropriate clothing. Uh, backgrounds, um, you know, I guess just ask yourself the question, um, if this could be bothersome to somebody else in any way, um, if it could be offensive or, you know, create something that makes somebody sad or makes somebody um, offended or whatever it may be, um, build in a background for yourself, you know, um, and, and make sure that that background is appropriate. So I'm, I, you know, I know everyone's had stories um, that they've heard about Zoom background and what's happening behind the scenes. Parents, uh, I totally, I get it. Um, you might have four kids and they all might be in different grade levels or in high school and you got one house. Um, uh, I have a, a, a nice house and it's a, a good size, but um, I know in the spring when both of my kids were here e-learning, I was e-teaching. My wife was home working uh, remotely. Um, I, I think there, there wasn't the corners weren't far enough apart at times um, to to be able to get all of us a, a place to work where where we were totally um, quiet and focused. So, um, anyways, I totally understand those things. You'll probably hear my dog bark uh, from time to time um, this semester, but uh, hopefully she she quiets down pretty quick. Um, anyhow. If you do have any questions about any of this, uh, please let me know. Again, all my personal information is here at the top. Um, parents, I know that there's going to be a ton of emails, I'm sure, this semester. And sometimes I'll get an email, um, a parent email, it's, it's, uh, you know, that involves two or three or four questions. And it's, you know, I, I respond and then you respond to the response and we go back and forth until we develop a chain. Sometimes it's amazing that you know, something that um, takes, um, you know, nine different uh, emails in a chain is something that can be covered in, uh, you know, a three to five minute phone call. So um, let me know if you do email me, if your preference is for me to give you a phone call back. Um, I'm happy to do so. And again, sometimes it's the easiest way to, to skin a cat. Okay. So again, really excited to get back to work with you guys, to meeting you guys, especially, you know, you freshmen, I have not met any of you except at a uh, Explorations Night. So definitely excited to see everyone's faces and get things moving, okay? Thanks. Have a great day.